previously on The Sean Ryan Show. That morning, I, I started getting a lot of messages uh, on my phone. And I read it, and, and they said, like, hey, there is a lot of things going on in Culiacán right now. Culiacán is crazy. There's a lot of, like, uh, narco blockades. So they were, like, setting up trucks and vehicles to block roads around Culiacán and setting them on fire. So I was like, yeah, they're probably doing an operation against someone big. I had previously had a ban by the Sinaloa cartel from going to, to Sinaloa. Of course, all the way, there were still, like, burnt trucks, burnt buses, like, hand grenades all over. It was a war zone up there. So I found a hole in the wire he had on, on the wall, and I literally jumped over in the hole inside his house and started recording. I had my phone in a, in a GoPro. Um, and inside was war zone, like heavy, like 50 calls all over, blood all over, man. You, I, I was like stepping in sticky blood all over. You broke into the son of El Chapo's house. Yeah, dude, and it was, it was absolutely crazy, dude. Of course you did. All right, Luis, we're back from the break. We're having a very interesting discussion about how to break up the cartel network. And you had brought up divide and conquer using propaganda, maybe a psyop. And uh, man, that's, I want to go into this. I mean, this is, I think that's the most legitimate solution that I've heard yet. And um, I mean, it's already, we're already seeing the effects of this, the effects of this in the United States. I mean, Russia and China are definitely 100% involved in a PSYOP war uh, with the United States. And, and we're seeing it with bots. We're seeing it with hackers. We're s- all kinds of things are happening. And look at what's happening. You know, the, it, it's race yeah. <laughs> divided. All these different hot topics are being, are being kind of crammed down our throats. And it's causing this massive division which in, within the country. And it's, I mean... As much as I hate to say it, they're seeing massive amounts of success. Yeah. And so what you're saying is we should be utilizing the exact same thing on the cartels. On criminal organizations, yes. I think that's genius because in the previous interviews that we've had, I mean, these guys have big egos. Yeah. And so it would be, it could be relatively simple to conduct a PSYOP Mm -hmm. on... Cartels and, criminals, and, and yeah. turn them against each other. Yeah, and you know, you know how I came to think of that. I don't know if that's something that will work or not, or, or, or like the consequences of that. Because I think that could bring Mexico to an ugly face before it gets better. But the way I started thinking of it is like these guys did the exact same thing to the Mexican government, right? Mm-hmm. At some point, we had the Mexican army um at a pedestal we, we we thought highly of the mexican army where they're like not not corrupt they are actually looking for their security they sacrifice a lot they're just great soldiers you know but then they started this campaign this propaganda against the military that they are corrupt they started putting out videos they started putting up you know like uh comunicados which is basically pressers from the cartel narco banners saying that oh, the the head of this faction of the military in Sinaloa is with us, is working with us, and blah, 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 blah. And what does that make you think of the military? It doesn't, it doesn't make you think or wonder about the cartel, right? It makes you wonder, oh, so the military guys probably are not as good as we thought. They're probably not the ones having our backs. They're just as corrupt as anyone. And then you kind of like stop believing in the army, and that destroys them. Because every time they want to go into a town, they're going to face resistance by locals, right? No, those are the, these guys are the f***ing bad guys. We'd rather be with a f***ing cartel than the Mexican mm-hmm. government. They're just thieves with a, with a plate, with a badge. How would you do it? And How would you create the PSYOP? I think, I think there, to be perfectly honest, I think there's been attempts to, to, to do it, specifically with the Sinaloa cartel. Think of, and well, with the Jalisco cartel neutral race. Think, think of this. There's been a rumor widespread every once and then. Every time I post a video, a story, a photo, 
talking about the Sinaloa cartel or Los Chapitos, whatever, there's a bot, one or two or several, talking about how the Mayo, Zambada, and the Chapitos are fighting and they don't like each other. And the, the real man, it's El Mayo. They're not the real guys, it's uh, Los Chapitos. No, the, 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 the true Sinaloa cartel is El Mayo, he's the big boss. And they, start, they start beefing and they start creating this division that is going into the cartel. Even now, like their henchmen, their own people, started talking shit about the other group, right? Yeah, he's the old man, but we're the good guys. No, he's these spoiled kids. We are El Mayo Zambada and we're huge. So I think there is already something going on. If it's by design, by someone, whatever, I don't know. If it's not, that's I, I think that's a great opportunity. I mean, I think I, I know how, I mean, I guess I don't, I can't say for certain I wouldn't, this is the direction I would go in, but this seems, I mean, if I were to do this, where I would start is I would not start saying this cartel hates this cartel. I wouldn't do it like that. The way I would do it is I would start creating fake busts. And so if X cartel has this territory and Y cartel has this territory, well, then I'm going to create a narrative in a news story that says why cartel got busted producing fentanyl on your territory. A massive amount of fentanyl that's never been produced before in this territory mm -hmm. where they shouldn't be. <laughs> or they're selling fentanyl in this territory in the United States, which is Control these things. guys' territory. Yeah. Or we're talking about avocado farms, jellyfish. I would start just creating narratives where we busted a cartel who's, so let's say Sinaloa cartel is in charge of lemons. Mm -hmm. And new generation cartel is still in fentanyl. I would create, I would, I would create a news story narrative that has new generation cartel dabbling in lemons. Yes. Because then Sinaloa sees that. They're gonna go. Yes, Dude, that's that's been happening, and I think again, like I, I think I told you this the, the last time I was here. I think they, I guess, because of my position as a journalist, with contacts on media and putting out stories, I think they're trying to use that, you know, to do that kind of stuff. Like wh whoever that is, if it's legit or not, I know that cartels, that criminal organizations, they operate like that. They, that's that's how they are dividing and concurring, right? Like different mm -hmm. territories in different places. Like the last time there was a huge bust of fentanyl in a fentanyl lab. It has a lot, it had a lot of fake stickers with the face of El Mayo Zambada to make probably people like me believe that that was that, exactly what you're saying, that that was a, a bust on a Mayo Zambada's um, uh, laboratory, right? Of fentanyl. Mm -hmm. But who sent that over? That, that, that was Los Chapitos. That was Los Chapitos saying like, hey, it's, it's, it's El Mayo. It's El Mayo who's... You know, go after him and leave us f***ing alone. He's putting on some weight. I just literally, as of, of this break, I just published a story with, with Vice about this alleged halt that Los Chapitos order in the production of fentanyl in Sinaloa. They hang a lot of new banners saying it's prohibited to produce fentanyl in Sinaloa. We're going to kill you if we find you, you know, doing this shit. What is that? if not a very basic and primitive attempt to do a psyop against the people, right? Mm -hmm. Saying like, hey, we're not, we're not doing fentanyl. We're the good guys. Uh, and then literally the first comment is a bot with two followers on my Twitter saying, it's El Mayo Zambada, that's territory of El Mayo Zambada putting in fentanyl. That, that, that shit is happening. And, and also I think we touched superficially last night about if El Mencho really exists, right? The leader of the of the new generation Jalisco mm -hmm. cartel. It's been years, probably a decade since his last photo. We've been hearing his voice popping up here and there, but with an AI, it's super easy to replicate a voice. We don't even know if that's him. It's super easy to start a, a whole fucking cartel that it is a psyop, mm -hmm. right? It's like, does the Jalisco new generation cartel really exist or is that a fucking psyop? Because you, you see the soldiers, but you never see the higher-ups. You never see who's leading. You never see people like El Chapo, that he was arrested a couple of times and 
He was like escaping prisons. El Mayo Zambada giving out an interview with uh, Julio Scherer from Proceso Magazine. Los Chapitos, very out there. They even had their own socials at some point. But the leaders of the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, those guys are dressed up properly as a fucking army. They know of strategy. They know of trends. They know of weapons. They know how to weaponize a drone, IEDs. And they have this mythical leadership called El Mencho hmm. that, that we don't know if it's still alive or dead. And that's dividing that cartel. Half of that cartel is saying, he's, he's dead. And half of the same cartel is saying, no, he's, he's pretty much alive. I mean, it's, it's just, it's... Uh... I've told you, I've been interviewing... A, everybody's so far behind the news cycle. Yeah. And I've been in, you know, like I said, it's been election season, or it is election season. I've been interviewing politician here and there. You know, and I've had some I just I've had some really bright minds on the show talking about how they would c could combat this stuff. And, you know, DeSantis wants to send in military. You know, a lot of these guys are saying, let's send in the military to handle this. Now in my opinion, yes, we could absolutely destroy the cartels. Mm -hmm. I mean if you have ever seen a special operations unit function at in combat, good luck, buddy. <laughs> you know, like, I don't care who you are. Yeah. We are going to come out on top. Mm -hmm. I mean, we are. That aspect of the military is top. Everything about the U.S. military is top notch. But that specifically, I mean, when it when No, it's just we're going to come out on top. I think that's. I think that we could destroy them. Um, At least the uh, the arm the armed branch the of armed the organization, branches. right? Like now, all the henchmen and so I, th I think we would come out on top with every fight that we pick. Yeah. Let me let me put it that way. Then I interviewed Eric Prince, and I was all about that. You know, I had talked about that with DeSantis. Uh, I think I had talked about that with Vivek, maybe. And then Eric Prince came on, and he said, and he made a great point. You know that I had not thought of. He goes, "What do we?" He goes, "Absolutely, that's not going to work." He goes, "Apparently, nobody's learned anything from Afghanistan. Yeah. What happens? You know, everybody says, oh, cut the head off the snake, get the top guy.' Well, we got the top guy. I don't know how many times. Yeah. You know, throughout the past twenty years, of the top guys. You know, and I think number two, Al Qaeda, had about a two-week life expectancy. Yeah." which means every two weeks we'll another one's on rotating one. in. Then he talked about, well, we can't just, and we can't just go down there and bomb them and bomb the, you know, the, 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 the lowest element, yeah. which has the most people, which mm -hmm. would be the, All the, soldiers the armies. Mm -hmm. Because then you would be killing innocent women and children. Yeah. And so his plan, what he thought would be good, would be to take this fight, to China and basically cut off the supply, cut off the chemists they're sending down there. But that that information is two years old, at least. I mean, yeah. you had that information two years ago. I think I think the psyop is the that's the play. I think that I think no one's really thinking about a, a, a psyop because we tend to think that this is a war that is being fought over in the streets with guns. But we forget that these these guys have a lot of what I told you the last couple of times I've been here, uh, a, a lot of social bases. They are in the heads of the people. They are in the heads of a whole population, of a whole territory, you know. They, but at the same time, that's the weakest point. They are egomaniacs. They have a lot of you know, issues on their, on their heads, on their minds, from what they've seen, from what they do, from believing that they started up from nothing and became the kings of the world, having much money from, you know, out of nothing. In a couple of days, they made millions of dollars mm -hmm. and now they're on top of the game stuff. And I mean, that's their, their weakest point, of course, right? That's, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say the wrong way, but that's, sort of my way in with these criminal organizations. It's 
it's not something that I show up my whatever. It's I get to their heads, I get to their minds, I get to their, I tell them what they want to hear, mm-hmm. and they show me what I want to see, and you know, and and that's why this is ongoing, and probably that's why I've been able to go in and out several times with different organizations, not not without trouble, right? Like they they've threatened me before and shit, but uh, that that has worked for me in the past. For, for just for reporting. But imagine for an army doing that. Yeah. Breaking yeah. them from the inside. Man, I'm just blown away. I can't, I mean, that's a great idea. I mean, you could sit there and really solve this problem and just watch them eat each other alive. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and as I was telling you before, like, I think it could be get bad for Mexico before it gets good. Because this is going to start a fucking ugly war between them inside their own factions inside their own core probably inside their own families and that's gonna hurt i mean this is what it seems to me that these guys love it when you come around they know they're (laughs) gonna get publicity they like hanging out with you you've told me that they love this show i mean what do they do you get any, like, when, when this goes out, we're talking about how to break up the cartels in Mexico, like the, the top cartels. What, what's the conversation going to be like when you return there and they listen to this and they're saying, I mean, are they going to ask you, like, why I mean, are you talking about how to break us up? I've got to tell you about something that speaks to the very core of our values as Americans, about a veteran-owned company on a mission to make a real difference in the lives of our military members. I'm talking about Pure Talk, and I absolutely love what they're doing. Our veterans gave everything to protect our nation, and Pure Talk understands the sacrifices they've made. They've set an ambitious goal to eliminate $10 million in military debt by Veterans Day, but they can't do it alone. They need your help. When you switch to Pure Talk's lightning fast 5G network, they'll donate a portion of every new order to this noble cause. You can make a real difference just by choosing superior cell phone service. And Pure Talk's plans start at just $20 a month, offering unlimited talk, text, more data, and a mobile hotspot. Just go to puretalk.com slash Ryan and make the switch. Let's rally together and show our unwavering support to our veterans. Visit puretalk.com slash Ryan and switch to Pure Talk today. It's the right move, and it's the American way. Here's a fact that I am sure just about every one of you listening right now is going to find absolutely disgusting. According to reports, 60% of pork sourced here in the United States comes from one company, and that one company just happens to be owned by China. And guess what? There's more. That one company happens to inject its hogs with ractopanine, a chemical that is banned in 160 countries, to include China, yet guess what? You find it in the meat section of just about every single grocery store here in the U.S. That's right. So I thought you just might be interested in an alternative. Let me tell you about Moink. Moink delivers grass-fed and grass-finished beef and lamb, pastured pork, chicken, and sustainable wild-caught Alaskan salmon straight to your door. Here's the deal. I've tried the pork... The beef, the fish, and the poultry from Moink, and it's fresh, and it's clean. Not like this junk that you get at the grocery store from these massive meat suppliers. You see, I like to know where my meat comes from, (laughs) as I'm sure all of you do too. Keep American farming going by signing up at moinkbox.com slash Sean right now, and listeners of this show get free ground beef for a year. That's one year of the best ground beef you'll ever taste, but for a limited time. That's spelled M-O-I-N-K box.com slash Sean. That's moinkbox.com slash Sean. 
Um, because I, I mean, yeah. if we get broken up, you're I'm out not, of a job. I'm not putting up bullshit. You know, I'm not lying. This is this is an honest thought I have. This yeah. is me thinking. This is this is me who I am. I'm transparent like that. I I can tell you what I'm thinking all the time. Mm-hmm. I don't believe in an army, in a foreign army, showing up and killing people. And if I was, if that was my talking point right now, mm-hmm. telling you like, Fuck yes, man, like we can send a fucking army and kill all of those, fuckers, and that's how you're gonna get rid of them. They're gonna tell you're gonna tell everybody's gonna tell that I'm that I don't believe in that shit. You know? yeah. that that's not something I really believe. So that's gonna what 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 are they gonna think about that? They're gonna think like, why is he playing like that? Why is he saying that kind of bullshit? Mm-hmm. That's bullshit. He knows that's bullshit. It's, probably more smart than that um that's gonna that, that's gonna probably have consequences they probably say like what the fuck are you talking about man sending the army to kill us you know that's not a fucking thing you know like fuck you yeah but all i'm saying it's honestly transparently saying like do these guys have big egos these guys have weak minds when it comes to operating inside their minds right it, it, they 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 have strong minds to to take a lot of shit from from outside impulses, right? Mm-hmm. Killing people, holding up to information, it being tortured, blah 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 blah. But when it comes to their family, their own, how they see themselves, how they perceive themselves, they lack a lot of self. Yeah, yeah, yeah a lot of like self respect, a lot of like self love, a lot of like that kind of shit. They That's will. the nature of a criminal, right? Mm-hmm. You lack a lot of like self-built insight. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know though. I mean, does the psych like uh, the psychology of a criminal that? I mean, there's no choice in Mexico. It's getting to the point where there's. I mean, what are you gonna do? You can't be an avocado farmer. You can't be a lemon farmer. You can't fish for jellyfish. They control the water supply. I mean, and. Let's face it, you know, there's not a whole lot of opportunity down there. No, man. I mean, I guess. So what, so what else are they going to do besides go to the cartel? Siding. I, I, I honestly think that for, I'm, I'm going to tell you like partially the story of this guy I recently met. He, uh. He, he tried options. He tried options. He was born in a golden um, cradle, right? In the center of one of the most powerful cartels in the world as a baby. He could have everything, but he wanted to try something else. He really tried something else. He tried to be a pilot. He tried to be a businessman. He tried to just get away from that shit. But at the end, he, he really couldn't, man, because his family was like huge in that business. So in order to get a license to be a pilot, he will have to go to the military. And the military will be like, no, 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 man. You're this guy. You're family. You're in bed with these guys. You're, you're not going to, like, we're not going to hand you a, a license plate plane to be a pilot, proper pilot. Yeah. So f- you. And then he wanted to start a business. And his family was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You go start a business. I'll give you the money. And he's like, no, 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 I won't start a business on my own. No, can't do, man. Um, if, you, if you have a front, like someone else running the business, because that's too dangerous for you and for us, because everybody knows who you are. And he's like, so I can't start a business? Yeah, you can, with my money and putting someone in charge. And he's like, but I can't own my business and run my business and be the face of my business? No, you can't. So he's like, well, I might as well start trafficking cocaine. And he's like, by all means. He was 15, 16. Man, he re- I mean, he was in the high ups, right, of the cartel. He didn't have another option because that's, that's the game he's playing, his family playing. And there's a bunch of them like that. I'm pretty sure Los Chapitos face the same faith, right? Yeah. Ovidio is now probably facing life in prison and he's only my age. But did he have a chance, really? He's, his only sin is being the son of El Chapo Guzman. You know, and now when when you're outside that those families and you're impoverished, I think you probably have some options. Not to get rich, you're not gonna get rich, but to to have a decent decent life, you know, somewhat yeah. decent life. Um, but I think also the whole culture of easy money, you know, of everyone trying to make money the easiest way and the fastest 
they can and getting to the top when you're 25 and, and driving Ferraris and owning houses and girls and clubs and shit. That's poisoning a lot of the people in Mexico, you know, because yeah. that's not feasible in Mexico. That's probably feasible and realistically achievable in the US, right? Probably. Work hard, you're smart, put up a business, grow that business, yeah. you can probably end up doing really well. Mm -hmm. You're smart enough to uh, create a new app that no one was thinking of, boom, you grow. You solve a logistic nightmare for a bunch of businesses, boom, you spike up. In Mexico, there is not that easy, you know, like money like that. You can't get rich like that um, until, unless you want to be part of the cartel, but you're probably going to end up killed and poor. Yeah. You know, one more thing on this propaganda slash psyop thing. I mean, I just want to keep hitting yeah. it. <laughs> sure, man. It's, it's, it's a real thing. This could actually work. Yeah. yeah and yeah. somebody is going to listen to this and think that this is also a good idea that's in a position that might be able to make something like this happen. You know, the minute, the minute that happens and the minute you start to get into the head of these organizations, you know, expansion stops because mm -hmm. then the problem is internal. Mm -hmm. And so all eyes go mm -hmm. internal versus expansion, you know, and... And then the shrinking begins. Yeah, exactly. You know? But now you have the things, two things. First, I think if if someone is trying to start a sign up with, between cartels, you need to know that you need to know the consequences, the outcome, kind of mm -hmm. like plan what you're planning to do, or you can be in the middle of you know like a lot of bullshit. You know, yeah. if you're just a regular guy on a computer saying, you know what, I'm gonna do a lot of like fake accounts and. <laughs> Start beefing, there you're gonna get into shit. Because yeah. these guys, it looks like we're saying they're dumb. They're not. They're mm -hmm. pretty smart, and they have a lot of like smart people around them. They're 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 fucking smart people. They just they just lack a lot of different strengths, but they're fucking slack, uh, uh, smart people. Just because they're not ethical doesn't mean they're not intelligent. Yeah, no, dude. Like know? to run this kind of business, you have to be smart, right? You you can't be a dumb fucking leader of a cartel. Yeah. You, you, you lack a lot of stuff. That's why your morals and ethics are shaky and are flexible. And that's why you do all sorts of shit. Uh, because in terms of, of money or power, but you're smart. And the other thing is we need to also address that the cartels or criminal organizations are, for the most part, they're not vertical. They're horizontal uh, structured. This means that if you if you operate on this part of the business within this family and they shrink, you're still gonna have different knots operating on a horizontal level, right? Yeah. So you need to do things that affect the ground, you know, the, the, the leveled ground of the organization for all of them, Yeah. for all these different structures, right? Because it's not like, vertically where the leadership is going to shrink and then everybody's going to fall out. It's just going to shrink this part, but all of these are still going to be operating. And then yeah. you're going to shrink this one and then this one's going to move here. And then, so you need to affect the ground. And, and I don't know what the ground means, probably money, yeah. power, uh, corruption. <sighs> the never ending discussion. <laughs> yes. Maybe, maybe that'll be implemented by the time we get we meet each other again, but, you know, let's move into, I keep saying this and I, I want to talk about it. You know, you're, you, from my point of view, you're two years ahead of the news cycle. I, I've been bringing it up multiple times. You know, you were talking about China sending in the chemists. You were talking about China sending in the, the supply. Mm -hmm. And, and now all of a sudden, the politicians, the media is finally picking this stuff up. But this is two years old. Mm -hmm. You know, the last time we spoke, they were, the cartels were already implementing the thing, the, the new drug that's going to yeah. take fentanyl's place. So fentanyl took over heroin. It's more potent than heroin. Now there's this new drug. It's called uh Nitazenase, yeah, is that the name of it? Uh -huh. 
what how do you say it nidazin nidazin yes it's 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 also a, a man made drug in laboratories i i can't exactly remember the origin of this shit but it's something like i don't know, like germany or some stuff like that as an experiment for a super potent opioid that could stop pain kind of like very similar to fentanyl this shit it's also like 50 times more powerful than fentanyl I've been speaking with doctors that they are very much on, you know, high alert. They're, they're like, dude, this is getting bad. I've been talking to first responders, firefighters, local police in different cities in the U.S. And addicts themselves, cartel members, all of them know about this. There is no fucking way that this is not making it through the news or politicians and all they're talking again, it's fentanyl as a talking point. How long has this stuff been? This has I mean, been this happening. This was a year least, ago that you yeah, brought this literally, up. Literally, literally, this, this has been happening for, for over a year. I, 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 have, I haven't even published anything because it's too, in, well, but the, the, back, the, the, um, the answers I'm getting from editors and magazines or whatever, it's, it's too into the weeds. It's basically the same as fentanyl. So it's another one of those stories. And it, this is too into detail. No one's really going to care. But I hope they, care man because this is already in the streets of this country if you if you have friends or contacts or probably if you have people watching that are first responders that are uh doctors they're gonna know what i'm talking about when 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 you bring out nida scenes and all sorts of scenes there's like a hundred or two two hundred more of the same families they're hitting the streets so that that's why sometimes you will test an overdose uh patient and it, it wouldn't show up fentanyl it's it's not fentanyl. It's it's something else. But it's nidazin. It's nidazins, or or one of the scenes. You know. So this is so. Is this a pharmaceutical drug? Yeah, that's no, th no, that's that's not pharmaceutical. That was apparently that was banned. You know, that was like this is too potent. We're not fabricating this shit. And someone leaked it. Leaked it or leaked the formula, and then they started producing that shit, which is super f weird. And and now it's all over. It's it's all over again. The same supply. The same supply chain, the same supply routes. So it is coming in from China. Coming from China, same shit. Apparently, it, I, I think I probably get this bad wrong, and it, I'll probably get someone in the comments correcting that shit. But if I'm not mistaken, I think it was first developed in Germany, uh, decades ago. The drug was developed in Germany, yes. but the supplies are coming out of China. But the supplies are recent and coming out of China. Are they? Is it the same chemicals? I have I have no clue, man. I honestly I, I have not no clue. I I'm very ignorant when it comes to, you know, like chemical components and shit like what that. What are they putting it in? Are they put? Is it pills? Yeah, in the, in the same in the same uh, the same uh, steam flow that that uh, the same stream that uh, fentanyl is getting to with you know uh, heroin uh, pills, uh, Tylenols, um, fake Xanax, fake Oxys, all that kind and of and all that stuff. Yes. It's just it's it's basically same effect, same stuff, but more potent than than fentanyl. It's it's fifty percent more potent than fentanyl. So that means with heroin, if you need it, let's let's just make a uh, fake measurement, right? If you needed this amount of heroin, liquid or whatever, to inject to, to have a strong high, with fentanyl you need this this amount right to to have the same strength mm -hmm. with nidazin it's going to be half that it's it's less so more profitable than fentanyl for cartels they need to add less or they're going to kill more people if they keep adding the same amount so what's the point why even replace it because so they are worried about killing off their users they don't give a shit they don't care they don't they don't care they don't care i mean if you go if we if we had Five of those guys here that I've talked to over this past two years, they are going to all agree on something. They're going to say, this is not an issue, man. If you, if you want to use that, you have the freedom, that's on you. You want to die from using it? You know what it has. You know what it has. You know what it does. There's overdoses all around you. And this is either because you wanted something stronger, and that's on you, not on me, or because someone's you up one of your local leaders is you over but we were doing what we need to do 
make more revenue, ship whatever you are, you guys are asking for, right? That, that's what they say. All of them, this is what they say. This is something the Americans are asking for. They ask for this shit. Um, when we started putting up, again, just like regular heroin, prices went down because no one was buying that shit. But when we started like fentanyl lace, prices started spiking. They want that shit. So they are just supplying a demand. Are they just spiking again with nitrogen? And they're spiking it with nitrogen. Nitrogen is all over, man. It's, I, many of the f-ing cartels, many of the, of the guys cooking shit, they don't even know. Probably the, the first chemist that, that went with this China's chemist and probably those guys, they know exactly what, what's happening. But then they pass the recipe through or, or sell the whole f-ing batches. They're just people mixing it that they don't even know. If you ask them, like, is that fentanyl or is that nitrogen? What is it? They, they, they say, it's white chiva, chiva blanca, which is basically fentanyl laced heroin or something laced heroin. They don't even know. They're just mixing it because someone sold that shit. So like, hey, just don't add that much, add this much, and that's it. Do We're you good. think there's more nitrogen than fentanyl now? I don't think it's still more nitrogen than fentanyl right now. Uh, but I think it's just as much as you need to have another hundred thousand overdoses in this country. Man, wow! It's, yeah, dude, it's it's it, it's bad. And, and and the last time I spoke with these guys, uh, can't remember, Doctor Kala, can't remember his name. Great doctor. He's uh, he's dealing with uh, with addictions and and with fentanyl problems and, and all these kind of like issues at a chemical, biological level, he was absolutely worried about, about nitrogen. He's like, dude, forget about fentanyl. And that, this was over a year ago. He was like, dude, forget about fentanyl. This is the new thing. And then I get reached pretty often for, for, uh, by first responders from all over the country on my socials saying, dude, have you, do you have any info on this shit? It's testing positive for this new thing, which is the, uh, a nitrogen or something like that. And and I've been I started getting more and more and more through like over this year, and I was like, what the f-? this is this is something huge and new. And you know, one one thing that I don't understand, and I don't know if this is coming from cartels or people that are cutting drugs here in the U.S., but I mean, you hear about all these people that are overdosing on fentanyl for smoking smoking a joint or sniffing coke or I mean. I mean, is why are they are they the ones doing that, lacing these other drugs, these recreational drugs with fentanyl? Yeah, uh, yes. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not sure about weed. Uh, ma- I have I've never found any like positive evidence that it is getting laced with weed. I think there is some sort of like cross contamination okay. with weed. Probably the same case with cocaine because it will be against the effects you're looking with coke right yep. with yep. coke you're looking to go up and the opioids and, and fentanyl shit it's it's going down so yeah. so i don't think that will be by design i i do think that should be or could be cross-contamination in some cases isolated cases or a bad dealer that didn't even know what what he's doing and he's just lacing it with whatever but i don't think that's intended okay it is intended with heroin. It is intended in a lot of fake uh, pills. Uh, on on, on Sinal- in Sinaloa, the last couple of times I've, I've been there, they have all sorts of pressers, right? With with the uh, with the Sanax logo, with the Advil logo, with the M30s, different pill pressing machines, uh, which they sell counterfeit, right? They, they 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 sell that shit as if it's real oxy content. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of people that actually believe that it's proper, right? It is now very hard to find those M30s, probably impossible to find it on a legal uh, streamline, right? You, you can't go to the doctor and say, like, you really need a prescription and, and, a, and, a, and, a, and being in a need of M30s. There are some of them that are selling that. They have proper prescriptions because they have something. And they sell that on the black market. And that's where the other shit comes in, right? Because all the shit that's coming from Mexico, it's fake M30s. Fully laced with fentanyl, not original OxyContin. 
So let's say you are a dad and you have a problem, an issue, you have strong pain, whatever. So you got um, you got proper OxyContin by, by your doctor. And your daughter, teenager, whatever, finds the bottle, pubs 10, goes out to school and starts selling them because they're hot now. Everybody wants those parties, right? So now that shit is in the black market, but that shit's it's real. And then another dude shows up and like, hey, I also have some M30s, but half the price she's selling them. But these guys is bringing all the fake M30s from Mexico, cheap yeah. stuff, laced with fentanyl. So all your friends start doing that shit, which is cheaper and more easy to to keep getting them until you get a bad one, then you're done. That makes sense. And same with Xanax and, and all those different opioids, right? Yeah. Man, that stuff's powerful, man. I mean, you know, if they really wanted to, if they really wanted to do, do some massive carnage with the drone stuff, they'd quit messing around with explosives and put those in there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I'm For not real, joking. For you know what real, I mean, dude. That that shit. It's that that shit is. There's a lot. I mean, dude. I have this video on my YouTube channel when I went inside one of these fentanyl labs, right? And if you go scroll the comments. From 200 comments, 150 are people trying to get those pills. They're like, where can I get those? I need those. I, uh, you know, I, I need some M30s. Hey, where did you have a plug in Phoenix? Hey, do you have a plug in Douglas? Hey, do you have a, a, a plug in New York? People are all over that shit, man. Or a lot of comments like, ha, huh, I'm just about to smoke one. Ha, huh, I just took one. Man. So there, there's people who like that strong high you know i mean this stuff is serious you know i mean more and more in the media you're starting to see kids you know dying on playgrounds by sticking themselves with a dirty fentanyl yeah, needle, needle or uh it's been used as a weapon against police officers but at this point you know where they blow it at them or throw it throw fentanyl at them and and these get it's dangerous when officers shit, are ODing on this stuff it's dangerous and shit man it's it's killing people in this country and in Mexico as well. I mean, even though fentanyl is not huge in Mexico, which it makes me think also, who's who's giving those orders? Like, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like cocaine. It's not hitting Mexico. It's all over Mexico. Methamphetamine, every other drug, but fentanyl, it's widespread in Mexico. Europe as well. There is not a strong uh, uh, offering of fentanyl in Europe, and in Mexico, it's bad to consume. That's actually where I wanted to go next is where, what other countries are the cartels operating in other than Latin America and the U.S. and Canada? Europe has always been a, a strong market for cartels, probably very unexplored for the most part. Because mm -hmm. what they did is they broke deals with local gangs in places like Spain, you know, where, where a lot of like tourists and young people go to party and that's where the supply comes. And it was mostly also directly coming from Colombia and Ecuador, Paraguay probably, weed and cocaine, uh, methamphetamine, somewhat, not really. But uh, that was the usual market for Europe. Then the cartels probably felt like we're already capped the US market. We need another market. So they started moving into, into Europe, into Spain, the Netherlands, Italy, breaking deals with the mafias there, with the Albanian mafia, they have huge deals, that, like strong relationship, uh, Mexicans and Albanians. Um, and, and it's probably easier for all of them. You know, the, Spain right now, dude, it's, it's this, probably the second largest headquarter for the Sinaloa cartel after Culiacán. It's, it's fucking No Spain. kidding. <laughs> They're huge in Spain. They went in and bought a bunch of properties, a bunch of cars, a bunch of businesses. They set up shop in Spain hard, like hardcore. And and now the, now the Spain uh, National Police is like, you know, what the f*** are we going to do with all these dudes? We keep arresting major haunches of the Sinaloa cartel in the country. And apparently the network is huge. It's huge. 
So they opened up shop there. They started cooking their uh, methamphetamine because it was probably easier to start cooking within the country than bringing shit over. Mm-hmm. Um, they found a good proxy for cocaine. Africa was a great proxy for them. So they will, they will ship cocaine straight from Colombia, Ecuador to Africa, use the local gangs uh, to, to protect, to run, to smuggle, to everything, and then put that right up uh, through Italy across the uh, Mediterranean, uh, Gibraltar, mm-hmm. across, no the, across the sea. How long has this been going on? This has been going on for like probably five, six years now. And also another huge port of entry, it's Antwerp. They found this little, little port in Netherlands called Antwerp. And it was a small commercial port, very much unwatched. And they managed to corrupt every single officer and every single person in Antwerp. And now they're pushing in a lot of stuff through Antwerp to a point that it's now, again, out of control. The, 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 the uh, Netherlands, it's, it's having a hard time to stop shit from coming in through, through Antwerp because of the corruption network they managed to establish there. So, so I guess Europe right now, it's, it's a super hot market for, for Mexican criminal organizations, specifically for the Sinaloa and, and, and Jalisco cartels. Those guys, Jalisco cartel did something that the Sinaloa cartel wanted to do for a good while and they couldn't achieve, which is basically getting Africa, well, not the whole continent, probably the west side of, of Africa, this, this west countries in Africa, to, to basically have a flag of their cartel. El Chapo tried to do several times that. But he was facing that the gangs were not really aligning with his operations and it wasn't really working, although he used Africa as a proxy to push shit in. He rather went to Antwerp and start corrupting people there and pushing drugs through Antwerp and through Spain instead of dealing with the Africans. But the Carter Jalisco, somehow, they found a way to own Africa, to own turf, to own gangs. And, 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 if, <laughs> and if you go on Africa and start asking about the Jalisco cartel, whatever, they, they know what you're talking about, you know. A lot of them are working for the Jalisco cartel. So how does it work? Would the cartel send in their, would they send in, would they do what China did and send in chemists and send supplies? Or do they send the entire enterprise out there and it's their own cooks, it's their own gangs, no, I, it's their own... I think what they do is they, they find first leadership, right? Between like the gangs and the governments. You know, the African government is also pretty weak when it comes to corruption. It's, mm-hmm. it's highly corrupt, corruptible. Uh, so they find these open windows and they start lending the name, right? They start like, dude, we have the best prices. We have the best contacts in South America. We own the shit. Um, we'll give you a cut and you can use our name. Because we're a big enterprise, right? So they open up like these sort of like, um, como se llama? Uh, franchises mm-hmm. at the beginning. And after a few years, they own the full, whole thing. They're, they are operating under the name of Cartel Jalisco and within the leadership of Cartel Jalisco. And so, so yeah, Jalisco Cartel is now huge in Africa. The Sinaloa Cartel is huge in Spain. And both are huge in Antwerp in the Netherlands. What do you think that the most profitable strategy is? Would it be the Sinaloa cartel inside Spain, inside Europe, setting up little satellite um, production, drug production points, or would it be a big production facility in Africa and and just sending boats, fishing boats, submarines, airplanes, whatever you can across the Mediterranean and yeah, Europe. I think that's that's probably the most the most profitable. I mean, Africa has the perfect storm for criminal organizations, right? Mm-hmm. Highly corrupted, weak on their governments, yeah, and starving to death. Yeah. So, yeah. What are they what are these deals they're making with the Eastern Bloc countries? I mean, you had mentioned the, I believe, uh, the Armenians. Uh, Albanians. The Albanians. Uh-huh. I think pretty much they they run, for what I understand, Albanians are huge in Ecuador specifically. They started operating their own mafia in Ecuador and in some parts of Mexico, like Cancun. 
very small operations in Colombia, but that was the Albanian mafia, you know, trying to go there and say- What are, like, they, what are they trying to accomplish? They, they, they wanted to have like great deals in terms of cocaine and, 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 and drugs, right? Because they're more into human, human trafficking. trafficking. Yes. So at the beginning, apparently they were just like opening up to a stream of cocaine. Okay. Then they started opening up like, okay, so we can have a deal where you give us cocaine, we'll smuggle, you know, girls for human trafficking through your country. And we, we, we'll start benefiting from that. Then it changed when these cartels, Sinaloa and Cartel Jalisco, started going south at some point, and this is this is this was something pretty f smart and genius by the Jalisco cartel. What they did is they said, okay, so the U.S. it's 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 done. I mean, we have hands there. The Sinaloa cartel, for the, for the most part, has a lot of clients, but we haven't looked south. Like we need to own because they're all, we have um, provide um, suppliers. In, in South, but we don't know that supply thing. We buy from them. We need to own that shit. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. How many of you out there are looking forward to the upcoming holiday season? It's right around the corner. Or are some of you dreading the upcoming holiday season? Maybe you struggle to be upbeat. Maybe you struggle to be cheerful. Look, a lot of us let the holiday stress get to us around this time of year, and believe it or not, it is not that uncommon. This time of year can be a lot, and it's natural to feel some type of sadness or anxiety about it. But adding something new and positive to your life can counteract some of those feelings. Therapy can be a bright spot amid all the stress and change, something to look forward to and make you feel grounded, and to give you the tools to manage everything going on and it's very convenient with BetterHelp. It's entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash Sean today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Sean. So they went to Ecuador, to Colombia, to, to Venezuela, to Paraguay, um, to, to literally own that part of the business, right? And to first franchise it, and second saying, we own this shit. Now the, the, the gangs fighting in Ecuador, having, Ecuador is having one of the worst moments in history when it comes to, to violence right now. It's, it's, it's probably as much, if not worse, uh, than what is happening in Mexico. It's a, it's a bloodshed in, in Ecuador. And before it was the Choneros versus the other guys. I can't remember the name. The, uh, I can't remember the name. Two local gangs, basically gangs. Mm -hmm. um, but now there it's the Sinaloa cartel against the Cartel Jalisco new generation. So they exported the leadership of the cartel to these places, to these territories. So what happened with the deals with the Albanians is that now two mafias are in charge of heavy part of, of both businesses, right? Of, of human trafficking and of drugs trafficking to, to Europe, benefiting off of each other, using the same level of violence. They're not fighting. You're, 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 you're not seeing the Albanians fighting the Jalisco cartel, the Sinaloa cartel. There are three different enterprises working each other and street level, Jalisco versus Sinaloa, fighting for turf in, in Ecuador. So that's, I mean, apparently they, they do have a good relationship and they should have something put together when it comes to, to, these, to these mafias in, in, in the eastern part of, uh, of Europe. Europe. Mm -hmm. How are these guys, I mean, man, this is gonna, this is really gonna hit Europe. This is going to be interesting. It's going to be an interesting news cycle as well when this starts to make 
mainstream media probably in the next two, two years, years. <laughs> but um <laughs> the next two years you're gonna tell me dude i just interview a politician yeah. saying that not, there is new thing called night scenes and that the ecuadorians are crazy now. yeah and and that um the fentanyl market in europe is taking <laughs> off yes <laughs> i mean that's going to be an interesting news cycle when you know, europe's hard on the u.s yeah. you know it's they're very critical mm -hmm. of the stuff that we're doing it'll be interesting when they have the fentanyl problem in full force yeah. what they have to say about how we're dealing with yeah. this problem then if they if they do man because again this is why i first started believing that th that this was this was an attack basically on this country right no one else is using no one else is demanding it's not popping up nowhere else yeah. just in the in the u.s why it's like dude that that has to be by the sign well a lot of people believe that china kind of aided the cartels because of the opium wars. Yeah. Know, back well, in uh, I'm not sure if that's the reason behind it, right? Like the opium opium wars, like revenge or whatever. I I can't say. But I do can say it's like the target was and has been the US. Yeah. Like, that's definitely true. Yeah. Well, I mean benefits China to weaken us. You know, it definitely benefits the cartel that we're just right across the border. But now it seems they're maxed out you know, as we discussed earlier, and so they're looking for new turf. Where's the new turf? Probably Europe. Europe. Very probably. Or Africa. There, there's a lot of, there's a lot of like settling. Well, the uh, problem with China. Africa is they won't be able to afford the product. Yeah, that is true. You know, yeah. and, but the Europeans can afford the yeah. product. Yeah. The, you know, several countries in Asia yeah. would be able to afford the product. That is so you know? weird. And it's, a, it's going crazy in Canada too. Yeah. You know, but so that'll be an interesting news cycle. But how are they kind of setting up within the United States? I know that the, I mean, I don't think the fact that the cartels, the, 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 the upper echelon of the enterprises that are setting up in, within the U.S., I don't think that has anything to do with how open the border is as much as I would love to create that yeah. narrative. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, they're going to get here no matter what, mm -hmm. but um, now the massive amounts of fentanyl and human trafficking. Yeah. I think that could probably, we could at least slow the bleed there, but how are these guys setting up their enterprise here in the U S so, so basically the U S has the money, right? Has the power. It's, it's a client. That's for one thing. So I guess, from the 90s, 80s, they started doing like great relationships, establishing relationships in the U.S., coming to the U.S., meeting clients in the U.S. since back then. Mm -hmm. Right now, if you look at like the heads of the both cartels talking about the Sinaloa cartel and, and the Cartel Jalisco Nueva Generación, most of their families are on this country. And I'm, I mean... It will be naive to believe that they're not working for the organization, right? That they're just family members. Mm -hmm. This the daughters of of El Mencho, leader of the Cartel Jalisco New Generation, they were born in in, in the US. They're US citizens. They're being they've been operating from here. They've been arrested and freed and keep back at it, you know. The sons of El Mayo, all of his sons, every single one of the sons of El Mayo Zambada has been arrested in this country and eventually uh, freed and back at it, you know? So, uh, I mean, there is no higher up when it comes to these criminal organizations, right? The, the, the main leaders of the organizations are operating within this country because they feel safe, safer, safest. Let me, I understand that. I guess what I'm talking about, I do understand what you're saying. What I'm talking about is how deep into the system are they woven into into the U.S., you know, with, with in the in the like with the government or with the government with with everything, you know, with with yeah. How are they embedding within the government? How are they setting up their organizations here? I mean, they can't just go here. They can't just go in Missouri. At least I don't think they can. And or, or Illinois and say, see all these cornfields. We're taking over all these cornfields yeah. now. Yeah, no. This is our product. Mm -hmm. I mean, they might be able to do that in Mexico. I don't think that they can do that here yet. 
but I'm sure they're trying to figure out how they can implement it. No, you know, you know what? what what's what's the what's a thing that it's probably misunderstood when it comes to the presence of criminal organizations in the U.S. is that they've always been here. It's it's usually we see like them and us or us and them, and we feel that that's the cartel, and we just buy drugs. But a cartel exists in the terms of like who owns that product and who sells it, right? Mexico, it's, it, it's, for criminal organizations, it's not profitable. It's not probably smart to send Mexicans, members of a cartel, to set up shops. They just rather hire by invitation, by money, by collaboration, or by membership, Americans saying, you're already an American citizen. You want to work with us? Let's let's partner up. You you buy the stuff. I you know get rid of the product as long as it's on the your side your side of the country, and I don't give a shit what you do with the with the product. You just go and do it, and you send back arms and money, and we'll we'll continue to deal with that. I think that's why we're not we're we're not gonna see cartels forming within the U.S. You know, cartel presence absolutely because. Sinaloa cartel has put in put in places with Americans. We've been seeing uh, doctors, teachers, politicians, officers arrested working for either the Sinaloa or the Jalisco cartel. I, I've been my feed on Instagram is full with reels of these sort of people. You know, like recently in California, this woman who is, I don't know, like the leader of the tax force against fentanyl for the state police, whatever. She was literally arrested with a bunch of fentanyl uh, orders, right? Why? Because probably these cartels, this leadership, through someone, through a middleman, got to her. They're like, hey, you want to make some extra money? You're already in a great position. You're a U.S. citizen. You keep 50% of what we make, and you, would, you, you don't need to make anything. Just help us out. Put in your, uh, a blind eye. And probably shedding up your own shit. And she, white woman, man, from a great place, great background, very well respected. She's the leader of the union of the of the state police or something in California. Are you serious? Yeah, dude. I'll, I'll send you that. News. Caught with a shit ton of fentanyl orders, putting up business. They, I mean. That's the way they operate. We think like, oh, it's going to come least Mexican with bulletproof bass to set up shop. No, dude, they're, they're, they're smarter than that. They're just, yeah. They'll just get to you and hire you and make you a partner. And all of a sudden, you are a cartel. You were part of that organization, you know? Well, that's, you know, that's, that's what I meant. How are they smartly getting into the U.S.? I mean, I know it's not time now for them to send armies or anything like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? But... I'm sure that, I mean, they're obviously very good at playing the long game, yeah, you know, and I'm sure. They have a strong corrupting power, you know. Uh, I was just looking this morning, so I'm putting together a story about human smuggling and how how's that, you know, working out in terms of money, who's making money, who's getting sentenced. So I went into the um, U.S. Sentencing Commission website. And I started looking at the graphs and at the figures, and one by one, and, and you look like 1993, 80% non-U.S. citizens sentenced for smuggling humans across the border, some 20% were U.S. Ameri uh, citizens, Americans. And then you go through the years, and that number started going up and up and up and, until you get to 2022, and it's 80% of those sentenced for human smuggling are U.S. citizens. And only 20%, it's, it's not non-citizens. It doesn't, it doesn't specify if it's Mexico or whatever, but it says non-U.S. citizens. They literally exported their whole business to Americans. They said, like, you know what? You're already a citizen. You can't go through checkpoints. We're not going to, we're just going to drop the humans, migrants across this wall. You take over and you charge half of it. Keep the money. And that way, they exploded the business, right? They were getting more money from, from a shorter cake. Now it's a huge cake. Small money, but still, huge cake. 
that's uh, that, that was that was surprising to me to to look on uh, on on documents, not even let someone tell me that it's it's literally documents that, that you're reviewing how many sentences and who is getting sentenced for human smuggling, and it's seventy nine point four percent Americans. Wow, you nuts. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to hear that statistic. Yeah, dude, it was. Uh, I, I was. Uh, yeah, right, right when you picked me up from the uh, from the hotel, I was looking all through those stats because I think wow. it's a good story. Unbelievable. What do you think about the border? About the border? You know, Elon Musk just went down there not long ago. Yeah. He's reporting on it. I mean, what, what do you think about this? I think first of all, I think the border is. A- Mess, and I think we all agree on that, man. It's 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 a mess. It's it's messy. It's bad. It's ugly for everyone. It's not good for 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 no one. I believe probably from some politicians in from a handful of politicians in 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 Washington. It's good for them probably. Does Mexico want that border secured? Mexico doesn't give a shit about its border. You don't think they care about the guns coming into their country? No, oh, man. Mexico, they they it's in a less. point where they they couldn't care less. Mexico cares about the next upcoming elections. That's what they're siding so much with the U.S., you know, like, they're like, yeah, we're going to put together, I don't know, this presser talking about how we're working together to battle fentanyl and to battle arms trafficking. Mexico don't care, man. I mean, we have our own border patrol called the um, INM, Instituto Nacional de Migración, Mexican National Institute, Mexican Institute of Immigration, the most corrupt institution in the country by far, by far. These guys are an extortion center. They're extorting migrants, they're extorting cartels, they're getting money from cartels, and they're in charge of stopping migrants from reaching the border. No wonder the fucking border is like that, you know? Yeah. They don't give a shit, they're just making money. Now, how it looks on the ground, if you go to El Paso streets, they're, they're a mess. There are migrants all over. They can't find a place to stay. Half of them, got across lawfully, because this is something that also it's, it's important to clarify. It's not legally, but it's lawful. There is a law that allows you to cross illegally the border and then request political asylum, right? Mm-hmm. You're crossing the border illegally, but through a lawful way to do it. But you're, not, you're not running away from the border patrol. You're turning yourself into the border patrol. You're waiting for them to pick you up, right? That once they pick you up, they have the U.S. government has a responsibility to start a process for 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 to, for you to claim asylum, right? And then eventually, through the years, you go to court and shit, and they say you don't have any foundation, so you go back to your country. Or yes, you have foundations, you can stay here. Yeah, you, you can stay in the country. Could take months or could take fifteen years. Yeah. So a lot of people is doing that. The thing is, there is not a system operating in the border. There is not a, a way, a path. The Biden administration said they, has, they have a path, right? And they said CVP-1 is, an, is a phone app where you can stay in Colombia, in Ecuador, in Honduras, wherever you are, apply, and eventually you'll get a notification saying, oh, you can come and let's review your process and let's see what's up. Obviously, it's not working. The app is bugged doesn't have enough applications, it's always crashing. These, half of these people, they don't have access to the internet with enough capability to go through this app. The other half are getting scammed and the other half can't stay in place. You know, There's a lot of economical migrants. But there's mm-hmm. a lot of security migrants as well that are threatened by gangs or by their own government to get, to, to get them killed or they already killed their, their kids, their wife, their husband. Yeah. So they can stay in place. So there, the system is not working. There is not a system. So when there is not a system, you also have a bunch of, in El Paso, when you go downtown El Paso, you have a bunch of them that are crossed illegally, that crossed through the border, paying a cartel, paying a smuggler, and they jump the fence, have a bunch of videos of them jumping the fence. If you go, literally, dude, it's so bad that if you and I were to go to El Paso, I'll take you to dinner to a good restaurant that it's right there with a border wall as a backdrop. And the first 15 minutes we're sitting there, you're going to start watching someone jumping the, the fence right there. It's that easy. You don't even have to go and find them. <gasps> you, you just stand there. The other one is just doing a, a news stand-up for, for a news outlet. 
So I was doing the typical reporter stand up, you know, with the camera. So I'm here at the board, blah, 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 blah. When I'm reviewing the footage, there's guys jumping behind me, jumping the f wall. There, it's, it's happening, it, you know, a lot, a lot. And, and, and you see the Border Patrol driving in out, whatever. I don't know if it's real that they are overwhelmed or I don't know. Well, I mean, you got to put yourself in their shoes, too. I mean, they get reprimanded for doing their own job. Yeah, that is true, know? too. And uh, we, we saw a big news piece, what, I guess about a year, maybe two years ago, where the, they had that Border Patrol guy on horseback. And they told everybody that he was whipping yeah. the migrants yeah. when it wound up just being the horse reins. Yes, yes, yes. And it's, yeah, I mean, you got to put yourself in their shoes. What would you do? Dude, they're, they're, I've, been, I've been embedding with them as, as well uh, very often to go on ride-alongs on the border with, with the Border Patrol in El Paso sector. They've been, they've, they've been really nice to me. And you see, they're like, once they're driving, they, they get a call. It's like, oh, there's another migrant, uh, you know, trying to get across the fence. When they're driving there, there's another one here, and like someone there. No, I'm, I, we're busy with dealing with another group of. So it's just a lot of people, man. So there is no way that a, a wall, a border patrol, you know, these guys are gonna find a way. They are creative. They're desperate. Some of them. The border is just like that. What you need is a system to separate those who yeah. are realistically requesting political asylum. And all of those who are just trying to, because if you put yourself also in the shoes of a migrant, right? I think it's very different situation you're, you're facing. You're facing, you know what? My military government tried to take me. They already tortured me. I need to leave. Probably the safest place will be America, the US. But if you're trying to do that, you're gonna try to do it the right way, right? Mm -hmm. You're gonna try to ask for po po political asylum, go through a system. But if you can't find a system, and everybody, uh, when you reach the border, a place you don't know, you're like, so where? And there's a lot of like smugglers and other migrants and other people telling you like, no, just get across the border, man. Just get across. Just give me 1,000 bucks and just get across. And you're like, yes, okay, with my family? Yeah, with your family, your babies and everything. And once you get across, the border patrol is like, what the f***? You just crossed illegally, dude. That's, I mean, like we can't process you like that. Just go back to Mexico. So I understand both sides. Now, yeah. the guys who are willingly looking to get across illegally, there's gotta be a reason why, right? Mm -hmm. They probably, they don't have any claims to do as a political asylum. Uh, they, they're not interested in, in doing it, you know, a, a lawful way. They want to come here to this country legally, yeah. being a shadow, right? For some reason. And it's overwhelming probably, yes, I don't know. Yeah, like, do you think that I mean, do you think that this, I mean, is there anything we can do to stop the the fentanyl? I mean, talk to a lot of experts, you know, yourself included, you know, other, other investigative journalists that cover mm -hmm. cartel stuff. And, you know, it's all, you guys are always the ones that are like, it's not going to work. That wall, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. No, I don't think it's it's going to work like that. Because I mean, right now, again, if you go to the statistics of uh, on the web page on custom and border protections, and see like the seizures of drugs, mm -hmm. less than ten percent is coming in between ports of entry, meaning through the wall, under tunnels, whatever. Less than ten percent, man. That's not even significant. Yeah. 90, 90 something percent, it's coming through the ports of entry. And, and when you see again the, uh, the people arrested, Americans, 90 percent Americans smuggling. Do, now, you, th do you think I that think there's a possibility? Do you think that there's a possibility that, there are, that these statistics are skewed because there's more security at the actual entry points versus? The, um, the vastness of the, the, the U.S.-Mexico border. You know what? I explored that possibility. But when I went uh, and did this story in, in Mexico, with, with uh, I embedded the whole route of fentanyl, right? From Sinaloa, the drive up to a place uh, uh, called Mexicali in Baja California. And, and talking to those guys, they're, they're, they're telling me, dude, you don't put all your eggs in the same basket. If you have a migrant with drugs, you can have a double loss. 
You can't only afford to lose one, the migrant or the drugs. But you're not going to lose two merchandise, two pieces of merchandise at once, right? That's that's why that's their logic. You know, they they think nah, we're not going to put migrants with drugs, mm-hmm. and also they say we're not going to put drugs through, you know, like the desert or whatever, because it's going to be easier to be spotted, right? How much how much drugs can you s- store in a person, in a human or whatever? You need a you need a vehicle, you know, to get across. And you can't do that in certain places. There is a there is a huge canyon, and then the river. In others, it's a river with a high f- flow. In others, it's the wall. In others, it's just the desert. So you can be easily spotted. So what they did is they started hiring uh, hiring Americans. So like the same the same thought as uh, as human smuggling. They're they're like you're already an American. You can pass these checkpoints pretty easy because if you tell the CBP officer I'm an American, American citizen you're usually excused from secondary and stuff, usually. We embedded with a girl, with a woman. Uh, she's the mother of five kids. She lost her job during the pandemic. And a friend of her at a bar came up with that. Came up like, hey dude, I know a couple of guys that will give you a car, a nice car, and they'll give you five grand every time you cross. And you don't even gonna know where the drugs is or what are you getting across. They're just, they're just gonna get five grand, five grand, as soon as you get to this hotel, every time. And you do it whenever you can, however you can, on your free time, whatever. She first started working at a local restaurant in Calexico. Shitty, shitty small place, man. Like, there's really not much of a, like, jobs or whatever. Uh, she was making, she wasn't making enough. She was like, dude, my, my husband left. I'm, I'm in charge of five kids. I'm not making enough. Plus, I need, to, I'm just making enough to pay for the, uh, for a um, uh, place to, that keep my, my, my child, you know, my, my kids. She, was, she decided to call the guy. He hooked her up just right across the border. They gave him my, uh, like, 2000, 2005 Mercedes Benz. Nice car. That's yours. Plus, here's your 5000 in the Benz. And just bring the, the car tomorrow. The cartel guys that I interviewed uh, that were stashing her car right there when, when I was there, that's that's where I met her. They, they told me the first... Five, six times, we send her across without anything. She, th- she thought she had anything, but we're doing that to test her first and also to get the custom officers used to her crossing every other day, once a week, every weekend. So they were used to her. And if they looked for something, they, weren't, they were not going to find anything. So we did that. Several, we do that several rounds. And then after the sixth, boom, we loaded the, 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 the gas tank packed with fentanyl pills and off she goes and and she's been doing that for the last couple of years wow and every time she's like dude i need to stop but i can't i can't stop right now i'm, I'm doing money man and and i keep she's like i keep promising myself i'm gonna save enough money to stop working but uh but i keep spending that money and then i go back again and then i go back again and when we were filming we were behind her filming her car loaded with fentanyl she got secondary they couldn't find shit they couldn't find shit. We were like, F- man, because we, we had to go to another line. And we're like, F- she's she's done, man. She's going to get a lot of f- years in prison. So we, anyhow, we waited at, at the motel. She was supposed to leave the stuff. Um, and yeah, she showed up. And we interviewed her. She was almost crying in the interview. She was like, dude, I was so f- scared. Did they find anything? And she's like, they didn't find anything. Do you know what you're carrying? No. Do you know where? No, they never tell. And and she she swore to the cameras again, like, this is the last time I'm going to do it. Now I'm scared. Pretty sure she's still doing it. Yeah. That's the same case for a lot of Americans, too. Like 90% of the drugs are being smuggled through ports of entry by Americans. Man. Enticed by the fucking cartels. Because the cartels are, they, they have the money, so the money pays. Right? They recruit them. They're so recruiting. they selectively look for poverty. Exactly. Desperation. For, for people desperate, yeah. People in you need. know, a single mom who's trying to wink her way to Yeah, dude. At a waffle town. Exactly, dude. It's and, not gonna happen. Yeah. You know, and, and Yeah, it was it was sad because I mean like that. I mean that's hard to Yeah, dude. It was it's it was, hard to refuse, you know, you got kids and You have to sometimes you have to do what you have to do, you know, to, to get afloat. And sadly for her that was that was her option and and it was pretty 
shocking and sad to see her because she was such a nice woman, you know. She was probably a bit older than me and she was good. She was she was really nice. You could yeah. tell she was struggling, you know. She was struggling. She's she's not a drug user, not like heavy drinker or anything like that. She's she's a nice woman trying to get her shit together for her five kids. And the, and, and and all of a sudden she shows up at this house in Mexicali with a bunch of cartel guys all cocked up with a bunch of lions in the house, kids playing around, weapons all over. And they're like, yeah, just go to the store usual. So you usually go to the to the store on the on the corner to hang out there with the owners, have a couple of, you know, chips, a soda, while these guys stash her car with shit. So she wouldn't even know where she has to shed if in case they ask her. Man. Um, and then off she goes. It's that's and, and that's that's that that's that's how this is happening. That's the all the shit we hear, all those talking points, I get it. I, I, I get how someone could think that it's migrants coming over with bags and bags of, of, of fentanyl. That it's not happening. That it's not happening. If if you have footage or photos or whatever, that's probably an isolated case. The, the, these are the numbers, these are the stats. These are the interviews straight from cartel members, straight from a from a from a human career that got enticed to work with this guy. Man. This is how they're breaking this country, you know? Yeah. This is how they're breaking it. They're taking advantage of the economy being so shitty right now. Everything is super expensive. The COVID shit, you know? Yeah. Broke this country. To the ground, you know. Yeah, made a lot of people super poor. Made a lot of people super super wealthy. Yes, yes, it did. Well, Luis, what else do we have to cover? Do we have anything else? I don't. I don't think so, man. I think we're we're good, and uh, have to fly to to catch. I uh, I I hope there is a fourth time. You know. <laughs> I think oh, there, there will, will be. be. I think there will be. What are you getting ready to get into? Anything crazy? Yes, I I do have uh, I do have a couple of of places I, 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 I I'm going to travel. Uh, I want to start doing more stuff within the U.S. Nice. These guys are doing. These guys are embedding and doing crazy stuff in the U.S. You know, we could talk about criminal organizations. Well, I'll tell you what. How long? How long is it going to take you to figure out what the hell is going on? Here in the U.S. <laughs> well, not much, not much. It's almost, I just need to work the logistics and the accesses, you know, for, for, you need to talk to these guys to a lot of times and, and several hours so they understand what I want to do, how I want to do it. Because if you just show up, it could go south really quick, you know. If they see a camera, they're like, oh, you didn't tell me or, no, yeah. I need to help them understand exactly how it's going to look and what kind of camera I'm taking and who's coming with me and what I'm trying to achieve and what question I'm going to ask and that kind of stuff. So it's going to take probably still a couple of weeks, months. Well, um, I would love to do an episode with you where all we talk about is cartels embedded in the United States. Yeah, dude. Let's... And how they're operating, footage, whole thing. Yeah, just I'm like done. every other time, I think that will be an amazing. That'll be cool. Yeah, an probably bring you with me. Say again. I'll probably bring you with me. Yeah, you know, we what? talked about. <laughs> we did talk about uh, some stuff last night. That uh, look, if these media outlets are giving you a hard time and they're not paying for the stories, I'm going to tell you right now. I love everything that you're reporting on. I think. I think you are one of the most cutting edge reporters I've ever met. Really appreciate it, man. And, and, and uh, you're you are always welcome here, man. And uh, and then some of this other stuff that we're working on. If these, uh, can I talk a little bit about it? About the exclusive interview? I won't say who it is. Yeah, just yeah, yeah. Just as long right. as we leave out his his name or his context, let's yeah, let's talk about it. Uh, but there are some very prominent figures inside the cartel world. Yeah, here. In the U.S., uh, that we Known may people. be setting up an interview with, yeah, and uh, his face wouldn't be shown. But man, if that happens, let's do that, man. Uh, let's do it. I told you they're ready. They're ready to. Uh, they'll they'll, they'll up your show. Uh, they know it. 
yeah, they know your show. Uh, I, I, I told them uh, through a secure communication last night that I was coming back on your show. And that dude was like, tell him to get ready to, to have me on his show. So that'll be, that'll be, that'll be interesting, man. I, I think you will have an interesting conversation with this guy. So do I. I, I don't think I would. I know I yeah, would. Yeah, <laughs> so you will. I'm down. Let's do it. Let's Fuck set you. it up. We will we'll be in touch. Let's set that up. I want to do it. I mean, I, I, just, I can't believe the cartels, the Sinaloa cartel is watching the Sean Ryan show. Yeah, that dude. That blows my mind. That is for sure, man. That is, that is 100% sure. I think, you know what? I think they like, they like that some of your guests are pretty knowledgeable when it comes to arms, to military strategy, that kind of stuff. I think they're interested in, in, in that kind of thing. They know? watch that stuff too? Yeah, no, they watch, they watch your show. I mean, they don't watch me on your show. They oh, watch, they watch your show. show. Yeah. They're, they 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 what they watch your show man they watch the interviews they watch the all the stuff they love that guy talking about um about um that CIA guy uh Eric talking, Prince uh, uh, talking about uh, the UFOs and this 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 guy who said he was in the in the CIA was that Eric no I was I was not Eric Prince which one um this guy with the curly hair oh um, Andrew Bustamante. Andrew Bustamante. They, they, they like him. They, they, they like that interview. I mean, we, we chatted a bit about that when I was doing this. I had this, I told you, I had this interview, 16 hours of interview with one of these guys, with a couple of those guys. And they were both talking about your show. And you could tell that they actually watch the show. They, they don't only watch it because they want to see what I say or whatever. They, they watch your show. They, they, they like it. Holy shit. They're like your interviews. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> and, and and more than they like, I think they respect your 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 show. They respect your question. They respect the people you bring in. And I think they respect that stuff. Wow. I never would have expected that. That's it's crazy, man. Yeah. I mean, I was telling them, like, yeah, I mean, there's a show, whatever, because we were, like, small talking. And I was telling them, like, I went on this show, and I actually told this guy this and that, and we were talking. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, the the... The, the, uh, he, what, what was he like? He told me like what, a marine or a seal, something like that, right? And I'm like, yeah, Sean Ryan. He's like, yeah, dude, I'm subscribed. I watch all of his his interviews and that interview with the CIA guy talking about UFOs. And <laughs> oh they my they gosh. know, it. yeah, they, they know they, it. Yeah. Wow, fascinating. It's crazy, man. Well, brother, I can't wait to knock that interview out, and um, if I can pull it off, if I can pull it off, which I think I can. Uh, it would just have to be spread out over time. I would yeah. love to go to some of these different cities within the U.S. with you and just That'll crank be. out these interviews. Maybe we can make a docu-series or yeah. something. But Let's do it. I'll, Luis, I'll, I'll produce it. Love chatting with you, man. Thanks Same again. Same here, brother. Out. Thanks for having me, man. That was a pleasure. And yeah. thanks for the, for the gift, man. My pleasure. Great be stuff. safe, brother. Thanks. I want to see you back here. So, so Sounds good. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.